council and members of the public. We had one closed session item this evening and we do not have any reportable action. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we will adjourn this meeting uh, to a meeting on Monday, October 19th, uh, 2020, that will take place via Zoom webinar. Closed session items will be discussed at 5.30 p.m. The open session will commence at 7 p.m. As all of you know, on March 16th, 2020, the City Council declared a local emergency in response to the global COVID-19 outbreak. Preserving the health and safety of our employees and the public is our top priority. In accordance with California Governor's Executive Order N-25-20, regarding the Brown Act and guidance from the California Department of Public Health on gatherings, this meeting is taking place by teleconference. The council chambers is closed. The public is accessing the meeting via the Pomona Internet Streaming Channel on the city's website. The council members and I, along with the city manager, the city attorney, city clerk, and executive team are all in different locations. Please bear with us as the technology may disrupt the flow of the meeting. The agenda has been modified to accommodate the needs of a council meeting that is teleconference. And if I could be so, um, if I could ask uh, Council Member Honorable Cole to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please stand. Everybody, please stand. Put your right hand over your heart. Begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag. To the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic America. for which it stands, one nation America. under God, America. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me sit down. Thank you. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Members Gonzalez. Preciado. Here. Garcia. Here. 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 Lustro? Here. Torres? Here. Mayor Sandoval? Here. Next item? Next item are Mayor Council Member Communications. These are reports on conferences, seminars, and regional meetings attended by the Mayor and City Council and announcements of upcoming events. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with Council Member Preciado. Um, first of all, I'd like to say hello to everybody. Uh, you know, we're, we're in October. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for uh, your help and and just your, uh, for being around and being more communicative. We really appreciate you. Um, the census is just about done. Uh, if, you, if you can send out any more last minute messages and have everybody uh, get as many people to register uh, to make sure that they do their census, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you that for everyone who showed up to the cleanup at Kennedy Park. Um, that's just a reminder that many of us are still out here, very, very available, very approachable especially for everybody in D1. Feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, and that is all for right now. Thank you. You're on mute, Tim. Oh, I'm Garcia. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, good evening. Um, first of all, I would like to first of all, I would like to wish all of my fellow teachers a very happy World Teacher Day. I know that COVID-19 is taking everything online and we're all uh, trying to cope with the situation as best we can, but never forget that teachers are a very important part of our society and our culture. And trust me, parents appreciate you guys right now. I know that I appreciate being able to see my students a lot, um, even if it is via Zoom. I also want to be, um, I also want to give everyone a notice that on October 17th, Saturday, October 17th, from 8 a.m. to noon, the Pomona Valley Hospital, Hospital Medical Center, in partnership with Fairplex, will be hosting a free drive-through flu shot clinic. It is imperative that we all get a flu shot this season. We do not want to have a combination COVID and flu shot, uh, flu season. Please make sure you get your flu shot. Be prepared, be aware. There's gonna be a capacity to serve over a thousand people at the flu shot clinic. So I thank Pomona Valley Hospital for reaching out with this information and to Fairplex for allowing the event to happen on their grounds. But thank you, Pomona. Thank you to Council Member uh, Perciato for reminding us about the census. And yes, we are all still here, very much available either by phone or email. Um, our number, my number is 909-630-3378 and I'm happy to hear from anyone who needs it. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Garcia. Uh, Councilmember Honoris Cole, you're on mute, Liz. Oh, 
I want to thank everybody that came out to the Urban Mission uh, in Pomona for the food and clothing drive that we had uh, from 1 to 4 p.m. I, I just want to thank everybody who came out and worked and volunteered their time, their energy, without even being asked. They, they just showed up. I was so touched by all that, and I won't forget it, believe me. I will not forget that good deed. And also, um, for the people who um, came out and they were able to take home some very good food, some very nice clothing and shoes. This was not just any, any unbelievable trashy clothing or anything like that. This was very wonderful, well, um, well done sh uh, clothing that came in from Los Angeles. So I wanna thank uh, Pastor Delrick Henry for taking that time to bring in two truckloads of, uh, of important uh, groceries and milk and eggs and you name it, meat. Everything was just so wonderfully organized. And um, to Minister Al Lopez, who is uh, the head of this uh, little church, which happens to be the first Mexican church in the city of Pomona. And also, um, uh, Pastor or Minister Dennis Perez, who worked so hard from five o'clock in the morning till God knows what time at night, just to make this uh, church existent in our city. I just want to thank everybody that um, that in that is enjoying the the beauty of this church. So uh, thank you so much for everything, and I am planning on having another one very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Anavros Cole. Councilmember Lestro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Good to see everybody as, uh, as usual. Uh, just a couple of things from me. Uh, looking forward to uh, taking a tour with Parks and Facilities staff uh, coming up uh, this Wednesday uh, afternoon. We're going to be trying to identify some potential locations for public art. Uh, in, uh, in District 5, uh, kind of in conjunction with the, uh, the push to get some artists uh, uh, work out in the community and, and hopefully we'll be able to find some uh, very visible locations um, in my district uh, to, uh, that might potentially be candidates for that. And then um, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, I, and I thought uh, Vice Mayor Garcia was going to steal, steal my fire, but um, uh, as my daughter would say, get your flu shot. Uh, and there is uh, another opportunity coming up this Friday uh, at um, uh, Pomona Catholic High School. It's going to be a free drive-through uh, flu shot clinic. It's sponsored by, and I want to make sure I get this right, LA Care and Blue Shield of California, um, Promise Health Plan Community Resource Center here in Pomona. As a, I, wanted to, I had to write it down to make sure I got it right. And it, again, it's free. It's a drive-through uh, at Pomona Catholic, which is at the corner of uh, Holt Avenue and White Avenue. So uh, uh, get your flu shots and protect yourself um, this winter. Thank you. Thank you, Council, Council Member Lester. Council Member Torres. Uh, yes, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the community partners out there in the city of Pomona and across the region for uh, giving back to the struggling families throughout Pomona. There's a big need. People need rent. People need help getting jobs and um, people need food assistance. Um, so I, whenever I hear good things about um, drive-through flu shots or food giveaways, um, it's a good thing that we're, we're helping folks in the community on that front. Um, I do wanna encourage folks that uh, we should continue to wear the masks. I got another private order from a private donation. This box right here has 50 masks. I'm giving out 50 masks to anybody in the city of Pomona. Um, I also have a lot of other supplies I got through private donations. And remember, folks, I'm not just focused on District 6 anymore. I'm now looking at the entire city of Pomona as a way to make outreach to people because, um, you know, we're in this together, right? And, and I'm a strong believer that, you know, when we work together, we win together. And um, I'm strongly uh, convinced that if we wear these masks, if we continue to provide financial assistance, rental assistance, assistance with utilities, uh, together we're going to make it out of this pandemic. So. Oh, and by the way, don't forget that your ballots dropped, uh, your voting ballots dropped. It's going to be a little bit different this year. I'm not telling you in any way, shape, or form how to vote and who to vote for, but I will tell you that your ballots have dropped and to look out for them. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to make outreach to me on social media. I'll be happy to 
um, help you out and, and provide any clarification. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Torres. Okay, the city clerk, next item. Okay, next item is public participation. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, city manager communications. These are reports from the city manager. Deputy Honorable city manager Luba? Yes. Mayor, members of the city council, this evening staff is asking that item four be removed from the agenda for consideration at the next council meeting. I believe a memo was distributed, but essentially there's additional funding available for this program that we wanted to appropriate and receive all at the same time. So staff would like to repackage that on the next meeting agenda. Okay. Um, will do. And if I can ask um, City Clerk uh, Rosalia Butler if uh, we could Unless we have speakers on that item, uh, we'll just um, vote to remove that item at the beginning of the cons consent calendar. Okay. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else, uh, Mr. Gluba? That is all, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. All righty. City Clerk, next item. Next item is public participation. In response to the global COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with California Governor's Executive Order N2520, regarding the Brown Act and guidance from the California Department of Public Health on gatherings, Please note that comments for public participation or for a specific item on the agenda were accepted by email and will be read into the record by the city clerk. The deadline to submit email comments was 6 p.m. and comments will also be accepted via the Q&A feature on Zoom or by live comment by phone or internet. If you would like to comment, please indicate now to staff by either using the raise hand feature on Zoom, dialing star nine if you are calling in via phone or leaving a comment in the Q&A box. Staff will call you We'll call on you one at a time. Each speaker will have up to three minutes for their comment. Mayor, we do have two email comments that were um, handed into the city clerk's office today and I can read those now. Okay, thank you, Ms. Butler. Okay, first uh, comment comes from Julie Mestas. Dear city clerk and city council, I'm writing tonight regarding the vagrant situation that we have and the expense to property owners. We have a property in the downtown area that was broken into through the wrought iron in an alley. I couldn't understand how they did it. Um, then lo and behold, I got a nixel regarding thefts in Laverne and San Dimas. There were three people that were caught, one man and two women. The two women were from Pomona. In Claremont, an article came out and a percentage of the vagrants committing crimes in the Claremont area are coming from Pomona. Our police are doing a great job with the limited staff they have. We need to fund more police, not defund them. I know we are, ha we are living in crazy times, more reason we need more police. It's costly for the property owners and costly to our city as well. We need more police in our city. Thank you. And the next comment comes from Mr. Ron Berker. I have recently needed a repair to my sewer line lateral and was told that city ordinance section 62-399-G requires the property owner to repair the lateral beyond the property line regardless of the cause of damage. In a time where 57% of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 surprise expense, the ordinance creates a hardship for the homeowners of Pomona. In other cities throughout California, the municipality is responsible for street maintenance and repair, including the sewer laterals up to residential property lines. I would like to propose a change to this ordinance and the maintenance responsibility of the sewer lateral pipelines. The line of ownership should be transferred from property owner to municipality at property line, not at the sewer line main. This could potentially save the community thousands of dollars that could be reinvested into our local businesses by using the city's expertise in construction project pricing. Can we consider an, an improvement to this ordinance for the benefit of all residents and businesses in the city of Pomona? Thank you for taking my question. And that was the final um, email question for this evening. And uh, I'm sure we may have some um, speakers. Four um, individuals that will would like to speak this evening. Uh, first okay. will be... And just to let each speaker know, they have a total of three minutes. Yes, the first speaker each is speaker. Uh, actually a phone number. It's 909-628-0, I'm sorry, 9060. Go ahead. Speaker, you need to unmute yourself. Star six unmutes them if they need to know. Okay. 
it looks like they're having some difficulty. Let's come back to them. We can always call them again. Why don't we call them last? If we can go on to the next speaker. Okay. Next speaker is uh, Chris Chung. Go ahead, Mr. Chung. You have three minutes. Mr. Mayor, City Council. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm getting some. Hang on, Mr. Feedback. Chung. We're just having some uh, difficulty hearing you. There was some uh, background noise. Uh, do you want to try again? Can you hear me now? Better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, I, I sent a letter today to the City Clerk and asked her to forward that to you. I don't know if she received it or had, has forwarded that letter to you guys. Um, my complaint is in regards to 728 East Mission, which is a uh, proposal for a cannabis retail store. My complaint, uh, our, and I'm sorry, I, I, was, I am a former employee of the city of uh, Pomona and I love the city. My uncle owns the pharmacies in the Pomona and, and for him, I'm doing this on his behalf. Uh, we, are, we provided evidence to the uh, planning department showing that the applicant did not send no, notice 10 days in advance. Uh, the applicant sent a, a letter to my uncle uh, dated July 20th, uh, 2020 for a meeting on July 28th, which is only eight days before that. Uh, the applicant signed a, a declaration under the penalty of perjury that he sent all mailings from the downtown Los Angeles branch. Uh, upon questioning by city staff, he later indicates that, he, that they had their attorney um, send 16 more notices from the, the city of Apple Valley, uh, it, which is in the, in the county of San Bernardino, but is not in the city of uh, San Bernardino, uh, and that... Um, and there was no signed affidavit or sign, you know, any sign of uh, under penalty of perjury under that. But what's important to know is that the, as we provided evidence, it's our postmark is from the city, not county, but the city of San Bernardino. And, and we provided a picture showing that, that it says San Bernardino, California, 924. 924 is the first three digits of the, of, of any zip code. So in, in Pomona's case, you know, it'd be 917. Uh, in, in LA, it'd be 900. In, in Apple Valley, it'd be 923. So the statement that, that the applicant mailed all notices on July 16 and 17 from downtown LA is actually false as proven by our, uh, our envelope, which shows that it's from San Bernardino. And he further made false statements saying that they sent it from Apple Valley. So we provided such evidence to city staff and they chose not to, uh, they chose to believe the applicant over us, uh, indicating that everything was sent on time and, 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 and they had the information documentation to prove it. We, we did and perform a public records request and they didn't, could not provide us with any evidence, not one evidence showing that anything uh, was submitted to San Bernardino 10 days prior. And, and the only thing that they can point to is this original sign affidavit saying that everything was sit, sent from the city of Los Angeles. And so therefore, the applicant should not have been able to participate in the public meeting and should have received a zero. The staff ignored us. Uh, they went ahead with that and conducted that meeting despite the fact that we provided proof. Um, and, what's, and what's more interesting, if you look Mr. at- Mr. Chung? Yes. 10 seconds. Okay. Just one more quick thing. The, from the list that they provided, they provide 247 uh, addresses, but there's 110 that are not owner occupied. So there's 110 occupants. So they should have sent sure, out th sure. over 300. Your time, your time is elapsed. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, can you please uh, review the letter and, and I hopefully someone can get back to me. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, next speaker, Ms. Butler. You're on mute. Okay. Um, the caller on the phone. You have three minutes. Can you hear me now? Hi, I am Daryl Cruz. Perry Anslinger created the Gore Files back in the 1930s. It was a lengthy list of cases where marijuana use had supposedly produced violent crime. 
Reaper Madness not only happened in the 30s, but it also happened in the early 70s with Richard Nixon, entitled 22. In 2006, Reaper Madness was brought to Pomona by Mayor Norma Torres. Staff created their own gore files. This time, a collection of articles where cannabis businesses had supposedly produced violent crime. This action, along with the stigma around cannabis usage, when mixed with the hate and ignorance of Norma Torres, resulted in unfair treatment to the Pomona cannabis business operators. How will you receive it when I label you with the crimes of other council persons? Are you like them that way? If at the same time we would have opened in San Francisco, the very decent mayor at the time, Gavin Newsom, would have allowed us to continue operations. If at the same time we would have opened in Oakland, the very decent mayor at the time, Jerry Brown, would have allowed us to continue operations. Harborside went to Oakland a full year after we came to Pomona and, the large, and became the largest dispensary in the world. The owner, Steve D'Angelo, has been called the father of medical cannabis and was given the Pioneer's Award. You may have heard some thoughtless fools say something like, we are all in this together. No, we ain't. Some of the most hateful people get into government and screw people over just for fun or political contributions or endorsements. In 2017, yeah, minute, the county of Los Excuse me? Yeah, one minute. Thank you. In 2017, the county of Los Angeles completed the last step for their cannabis business program. They predicted they would have received over $20 million from it by now, but instead they had to put out over $3 million. As soon as they indicated they would be issuing licenses, I called to let them know I would be down the next day to pick up my license. The sergeant at arms for the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors called me back and said, do not come down. When I arrived, they had me wait. After a while, eight sheriffs showed up and then a three-person film crew. But the next day, only six sheriffs showed up. One got uppity. Actions pending. So nobody's getting a license soon. Like Pomona in Los Angeles County, I was first. So I will get my license first. Or, well, Your time is up. you can ask Please the director of cannabis with L.A. County or the sergeant at arms what's the hold up. Thank you. All righty, Ms. Butler, do we have any other speakers? We do. We have two more. Our next speaker is Jocelyn Brambila. Jocelyn, go ahead. You have three minutes. Hi, can you hear me? Perfect. Um, in April, the city decided that due to COVID measures of quarantine um, and increases in work from home to forego ticketing due to city sweeping. In August, while the state remains, uh, remained and still remains under certain quarantine, individuals still face fears for COVID and many residents continue to work from home, the city reinstated ticketing. Um, my husband and I are just two of many residents that are currently working from home with no expected due date back into office until mid-2021. We work in a one-bedroom apartment that allots us one parking space. On every other Tuesday, we face difficult situations on where to move our car so that we don't interfere with city sweeping. The city sweeps in sections, meaning that miles of the city are swept at once, and to not interfere with that sweeping, you would have to move outside of those areas. After speaking with the representative from Parking Enforcement, he also confirmed that ticketing is not done throughout the city, but specifically in areas that seem to have multiple households, thus multiple cars. There's a clear correlation between multiple households and multiple generation homes and poverty. So it just seems like there is a clear attachment to this policy in punishing the poor for being poor. And when a citizen does get a ticket, um, the ticket doesn't have a clear uh, due date. I wish that the video was on and I could show you one. It's written in very small writing on the back. If you miss that 14 day due date, the ticket goes up by 2.5 times the original cost from $50 to 125, which again, this is a ticket targeting our lower income communities. 
So I am here today after multiple attempts of contacting my city council member, Mr. Torres, and the mayor's office with no success over the last two months. I'd like to ask the council, what changed that made you guys change the decision to reinstate ticketing in August? Because from where I'm standing, nothing much has changed in our communities. We are still struggling with the same things. Has the city ever taken a look at these multi-block areas and how that impacts its citizens and how difficult it is to move vehicles specifically for lower income communities that maybe work at night and park during the day? Also, um, has the city looked into the ticketing and whether making it very clear and visible what is due, how much is due, when it is due by and not punishing those for not being able to look at the back or maybe not reading it correctly because of font is small. Also, just want to say that I fully understand the need for maybe some ticketings. Um, normal times absolutely call for normal fines and normal procedures, but these aren't normal times. So I'd just like to ask what steps I can take to begin changing some of these policies that make it very difficult for the citizens. Sorry, your time is up. Thank you. Uh, just before um, we go into the next speaker, um, there was some comments made about uh, targeting low income communities. And I can tell you where I live, um, people have been ticketed in, in my neighborhood uh, for during street sweeping time. So I think it's important to make sure that we clarify that issue because otherwise it could be interpreted as targeting certain residents. And uh, I think it was Ms. Arambula. I'm, I'm sorry you said you reached out to me. Um, I don't recall, I can't speak for Councilmember Torres. I'm sure he'll wanna address it, but you know, You've, you've made your point here, uh, but if you ever need to reach me directly, my number is 909-762-1982. Um, and we certainly will uh, discuss this uh, matter that you have raised. Um, and then I'm sure Council Member Torres wouldn't mind sharing his number as well. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, so I was gonna ask if the staff could give me uh, her name and information so I could be sure to look up her contact. And um, I agree 100%, we are in very difficult times right now. Um, the city is waiving fees or uh, late fees, uh, utilities assistance. Um, so I think it's an area where we can look at possibly traffic fees as well. But however, just it is important for you to know that we as council members uh, do get requests from folks um, to have patrols. So it's it's a double edged sword there. Um, but nevertheless, if if um, um, if I can get your information, I'll have the staff um, get me that information. I'll try to follow up with you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Torres. And I think we have one more speaker, Ms. Butler. Yes, we do. We have David oh. Galvin. You have three minutes, Mr. Galvin. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. can now. Good evening, uh, members of the City Council, as well as uh, participants um, in our community here in Pomona. Uh, my name is uh, Damien Galvan. I'm a teacher as well as the boys head soccer coach at Ganesha High School. I've been serving as a teacher and head coach there for the last 12 years. I come to this meeting uh, just to uh, really put out to the community uh, the great accomplishment, first of all, with Ganesha High School and the great accomplishment that are both our boys soccer team as well as our girls basketball team has accomplished last school year. Um, as the head soccer coach for Ganesha High School, I come to you just to share as well as um, to just promote a fundraiser campaign that we're doing uh, currently right now. Uh, as you know, um, our girls basketball team won their first ever CIF title and we had also our boys soccer team who made a lot of history last school year. They're the first athletic team in all of Pomona Unified School District that has won a, C a CIF state championship in any sport since the, the district's existence, as well as the first CIF championship that our boys soccer program has accomplished since Ganesha's history. So it was such a great accomplishment that these boys have accomplished uh, last year. As you know, COVID-19 hit right at the end of our season. And unfortunately, 
we did not have the means to fundraise for our C the CIF rings for our, our boys, as well as other postseason recognition events were also canceled, one of them being, being recognized by our city council. Uh, so we're in the process right now. We have launched a fundraiser campaign to help with the costs and purchase of these CIF rings to recognize these boys for such a great accomplishment. There's been so much that's been going on with this uncertainty. There's a lot of negativity out there. And here we have in our own very own city something so positive by our youth that could be very well take many years to accomplish, if any, uh, ever again. I mean, this is uh, such a great feat that these boys have been able to accomplish. Uh, so uh, right now, we're currently trying to raise money. Our, our number that we're trying to, our goal is to raise $10,000. We, we have a roster of about 28 boys that were on the team last year. And I serve probably 70 kids that are in our program. It's a big Mr. Gilbert, program. Yes. I, don't mean, I don't mean to catch you off. Uh, what I'm going to propose is that at the next council meeting, we include this as a, as a finding of public benefit. Um, the amount of 10,000, we will certainly put that down, uh, but uh, very likely uh, the council will contribute perhaps some dollars towards that. Uh, whether the actual 10,000 request will be met is really dependent on every council member, but we'll be happy to put it on the finding of public benefit for the next council meeting. I appreciate that, and I would appreciate if you guys just can spread the word. I would like Thank to you. post on the chat just the, uh, uh, the link to our fundraiser campaign for your, just for your own personal records. Good, good to hear your voice, Mr. Galvan. It's yeah, nice to, nice to see you. Thank you. All righty. That concludes uh, public participation, Ms. Butler? It does. Okay, great. So we'll go to uh, the next item, which is the consent calendar. Next item is consent calendar. All matters under the consent calendar may be enacted by a single motion without separate discussion. If discussion or a separate vote on any item is desired by a council member, that item may be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately. All consent items pulled for discussion will be limited to five minutes. If they are not enacted upon within five minutes, the mayor will move that consent item to the end of the agenda after consideration of the public hearings. Any motion relating to an ordinance or a resolution shall also waive the reading of the ordinance or resolution and include its introduction or adoption as appropriate. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, before we um, move the consent, um, I'm gonna ask that we remove item number four. Uh, can I get a motion to remove item four from the agenda? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, Council Member Preciado is, I believe, the second. Uh, if we can do a roll call. Preciado? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Didn't hear you, Ms. Butler. Councilman Brown Tiveros Cole? Yes. Lestro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Mayor Sandoval? Yes. And so that leaves us the rest of the consent calendar. Uh, does anyone from the council want to pull any item from the consent calendar? Okay, hearing no one speak up, uh, can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar? Move to approve, Mayor. Okay, Vice Mayor Garcia, can I get a second? Second. All right, appreciate the excitement, everyone. <laughs> All right, if I can get a uh, roll call, Ms. Weller. Roll call, Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Tiberos Cole? Yes. Astro? Yes. Torres? Oh, did you call me? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sandoval? Okay, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Belra. Next item. Next item is discussion calendar item number nine. It's defining the public benefit to the community at large recommended expenditures and recap of expended funds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move to approve. Can I get a second? Second. All right, Councilman Preciado is a second. Roll call. Roll call, Preciado? Yes. 
Garcia? Yes. Figueros Cole? Yes. Castro? Yes. Torres? Yes. Sandoval? Yes. Okay, next item. Next item is public hearing item number 10. It's a public hearing amending the consolidated plan, the fiscal year 2020-2021 annual action plan and the fiscal year 2020-2021 city operating budget by increasing revenue estimates and appropriations for CARES Act funding for community development block grant CDBG CV3 funds. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have a staff presentation? Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, tonight, this is a public hearing to receive $1,180,000 uh, $1, of uh, CARES Act funding. This funding will be um, directly used for rental assistance, um, as well as uh, some funding is um, being allocated for administration so that we can administer all of the CDBG funds that we've received this uh, current year. Uh, so tonight is just bringing this into our city budget as well as uh, amending our consolidated plan to receive the funding. Okay, thank you, Mr. Frank. Uh, so this is a public hearing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, Ms. Bella, do we have any speakers? We do not. Okay, uh, is there anyone who's on this call uh, who wishes to speak regarding this item? Okay, I'm not hearing anyone. At this time, I'd like to close the public hearing. And um, are there any questions or comments from members of the city council? Yes. Council yes, member please. Torres? Uh, yes, thank you. Just, um, um, I've been getting some comments from the community and um, they've been asking for the link and the application. So if the staff can send me over information um, because the Congress member's office has been asking for it as well. Constituents have been calling. Um, they've been hearing that uh, different council members talking about releasing this money out for rent assistance. Um, so if, if you could provide me the link to that, that way I can get that uh, information to the residents will be very helpful. Thank you. Mr. Frank, you want to comment on that? Yes, um, at this time, we, the applications are not open. Um, we're uh, expecting to open this program up mid-October. And when we do, we will release that to city council so that um, uh, all council members have the ability to refer. Thank you, Mr. Frank. If there are no comments, can I get a motion? So moved. And can, I get a, can I get a second? Second. Second. All right. Roll call. Roll call, Preciado? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Little Cole? Yes. Lasso? Yes. Torres? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Next item. Next item are matters initiated by the city council members. Items for future city council consideration as requested by the mayor or members of the city council. Okay, we'll start with uh, Council Member Torres. Great, thank you. I have a, a couple of requests. Um, on Canfield Street, I had a couple of residents talk to me about, um, thank you so much, by the way, Public Works for repaving those streets. Um, but some of the residents were asking about, there's some markings left on the floor that they, um, they, they said they've been sitting there for months. They wanted to know if they can get them removed or if there was any work going to be done. If you can give me some information back on, on what, what those markings are, if they're going to be removed or not, that'll be uh, helpful. And then also on Willard Avenue, um, been talking to residents, um, some of them, and again, I hate to bring it up like this, but um, they're requesting um, either some letters going out to the community asking for um, you know, folks to clean up some of the issues that are going on in the alley. Um, I've heard the previous speaker talk about receiving fines. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not proposing we sent out any penalties or, or, but I do want to see if we could follow up and send out a letter or to some of those constituents around there, um, you know, encouraging them to, to maintain their portion of, of either the, the, the alley or, um, and, and the backside, um, that'll be helpful. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Whoa, 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 time out, time out. Whoa, one more thing. 
Um, is that is it a consensus? Yes, no, I have to do this because apparently the speed humps didn't get a consensus last time. So I just want to make sure that this is going to happen um, and that the staff is going to follow up with it. Can I hear something from the staff saying they're going to follow up with it or that I got a consensus? I think it would be um, appropriate for the staff to just update us on what our current policy is and why that policy exists and bring it back to a future meeting. Okay, so to bring back whether we're going to send out letters to the community, um, we're going to come back, we're going to have to come back on that, you saying? Oh, no, 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 I'm talking about the speed bumps. You had asked about oh, the speed okay. bumps. Okay, so yeah. on my letters that I want to Willer, can the staff send those out? Uh, somebody from uh, perhaps uh, Mark, code enforcement, I'm thinking. If you're saying that there's some alley maintenance not being handled by the adjacent property owners, I have the note made and I'll share that with uh, code compliance staff and okay. we'll make sure some notices go out. Okay, great. And um, since we were talking about the speed humps, actually, we should get in front of that speed hump issue. And I'm going to continue to bring it up every council meeting because I hear it all the time. And I'm um, not saying we propose speed humps on every single like I said, but I, I do think that we need to have a study session or some type of agendaized item where we could talk about that because it's coming up with some of the recent tragedies that are taking place in the community. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Councilmember Velestro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just like to make a request, uh, maybe sometime in the next three months, but maybe before the end of the calendar year. Uh, uh, Sonia, if we could get an update on the, on the billboard issue uh, again, and I'm, I'm only bringing this up because uh, for about the last two weeks, uh, three of the billboards as you enter the city um, on the 57 or on the 71 are covered with graffiti. Um, nobody's, nobody's maintaining them. They, they, they look pretty bad and, and you know, the image that it projects to the, to the general public as they enter the city isn't, isn't a positive one. So if we, if we could get an update maybe by the end of the calendar year, that would be great. Thank you. Yes, we will definitely give you an update and schedule for closed session if appropriate. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Ronaldo School. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, my concern uh, is directed to Chief Ellis for tonight. Uh, I've been having phone calls. Um, I've been taking the phone calls from people that live on Paloma Drive. They are pretty frustrated as to what they're seeing every time they open their door. Uh, we have a continuous amount of people that are loitering, that are gambling out in the front, um, that are, people are bringing clothes to these uh, people that are out in the street from what the neighbors have been telling me from Paloma Drive. Their children are being subjected to very undesirable things. The fathers and the mothers are not happy. They're taxpayers. One just moved here from uh, Anaheim. And she gave me quite a bit of information as to why this, uh, you know, she, her, her question is, why are we continuing to allow these people to sit in a street, in a sidewalk, in a parking lot from a private restaurant? Um, they want some answers, Chief. Um, I tried to explain to them how much we're doing, and um, these residents are not satisfied. So one of them will be reaching out to you in hopes that something else can be done. And um, this is very concerning to this little line of homes that are being continuously bombarded with this type of, a, uh, of appearance and, you know, it's just getting out of hand. It is something that is being very, very, it's put on Facebook so much. It, it brings down the city. And this is what I'm trying very hard to work on. And I know we can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. So, can we please come up with some more appropriate methods or answers so these people can have a better quality of life? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Ronald Roscoe. And Chief, maybe, maybe the um, 
ad hoc committee on human trafficking, uh, although it may not be directly related, uh, it's somewhat related in terms of the activity on Holt, is just some of the steps that we've recommended to take on Holt, particularly East Holt Avenue, that may address some of those issues. So maybe, maybe we can get an update uh, at the next council meeting uh, on that issue. Uh, and uh, I know that, yeah, I, I'll, I'll hold off on the, um, uh, on, on the on the conversation that we've had already regarding the, regarding that uh, that not specific to Paloma but just in general around Holt and specifically East Holt Avenue. Alrighty, thank you, Miss uh, Council Ramona Brosco, uh, Vice Mayor Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I just want to thank someone that's not a department that's not typically thanked uh, at City during city council meeting and that's code enforcement. Um, code enforcement is probably one of our smallest departments and they're called on to do a lot. And I really do wanna thank uh, them for trying to enforce our codes and our rules, um, sometimes even at danger to themselves. So I just wanna send a message to our code enforcement officers that I truly do appreciate the work that they're doing and all of our frontline essential workers that go out there daily to do what they're doing. I really do appreciate that. So. That's all I have. I'll be communicating with city manager regarding other matters. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Council Mark Preciado. Uh, yeah, if, um, you know, uh, if we could take a look at our on-ramps, off-ramps, um, maybe have a conversation with uh, the assembly member or the senator uh, about seeing uh, what we could do. I, I, I actually thought they were gonna get cleaned up and um, only one out of the four corners on the Mission 71 off-ramp got cleaned. I thought that was strange, but I know that there's others out there. Um, if we can take a look at those. And then also, um, just want to say that my prayers and thoughts are out. We had uh, some multiple tragic shootings in District 4 over the weekend. Uh, Chief, if we can get an update on that to our, uh, when you get a chance, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Perso. Hey, just uh, real quick on the uh, off-ramp on-ramps. Um, I know that um, I know that town was cleaned, as was Gary, as was White and Dudley, and I don't know about Fairplex. Um, it doesn't mean that there isn't trash there, uh, just simply because people uh, don't respect uh, some basic rules, uh, which is not to loiter, uh, or to litter, I should say, <laughs> not to litter uh, on our highways. Um, as far as uh, mission or around the 70, is it around the 71? I know, I know that they were going to try to tackle uh, that area, but I think probably an update's uh, appropriate. And just, just, just so we don't double, double, double down, uh, I did speak to Senator Leva's office and Assemblymember Rodriguez's office, and they're fully committed to getting Cal Trans to do that work. But I think it would be good to circle back with them to just get an update on when they're planning to finish that work. Yeah, Mayor? The latest that I've seen are the 71 off ramps and then the 60 off ramps. And if applicable, um, Steve, I'd like to join you on in that meeting with Caltrans. But yes, the ones on near the 60, actually right near the Caltrans office, need some work. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I would just add that the, the, the off ramps, uh, the two off ramps from the 60, or actually the, the three off ramps from the 60 in the city. And also, uh, in addition to those off ramps and on ramps from the 10, uh, also the, uh, the the Temple Avenue ramps from the 57 freeway are, are just a total mess right now. Yeah. Um, hey, Council Member uh, Vice Mayor Garcia. Thank you. Um, I, I really appreciate that we're all working on the same issue. I think the mayor is right. I think we all kind of attacked it individually in, instead of that as a group because I've also been sending emails to uh, Assembly Member Rodriguez's office concerning Caltrans. So I think we're on the same page and together I'm sure we can make some progress to make sure that all of the Pomona on ramps and off ramps are taken care of because as one constituent did point out, it is a fire hazard. All it takes is a, is a small cigarette to set that off. So thank you everyone. You know, I, I know this probably won't make us feel any better, but um, I like to uh, just drive around uh, different parts of uh, LA County, Orange County, the different counties. And uh, it's, 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 there are a lot of off ramp off ramps that are just challenged right now. It doesn't make it acceptable. Um, I mean, I know that there's some COVID considerations, but 
I also think this has been an ongoing problem even pre-COVID. So um, clearly there's a lot of work to be done uh, by Caltrans. So, um, well, that, that's everyone. And uh, I don't have anything to add except, uh, and I think this is clear and you hear us say it all the time, all the time. And Pomona, because of who we are, we have a lot of essential workers. And we have a lot of people work on the front lines, uh, working in factories, working at distribution centers, working at restaurants, working as housekeepers, working as gardeners. They are at the front lines as essential workers. And they are contracting COVID-19. Uh, and it is having an impact. You know, Pomona is a young city. And we have a lot of uh, people who, who have to work um, in order to be able to pay their rent, to pay their car payment. And um, let's continue, let's continue to do the absolute best that we can uh, to wear our masks, to socially distance, to stay away from group gatherings. I know that there's a desire to want to have a nice time, a nice party, a quinceanera, a gathering, get it. But it's, those are the types of things that uh, cause people to get sick and unfortunately, in some cases, die. Uh, and uh, so really, really want to encourage everyone to be safe, um, look out for each other, and, and really, really, to the best that you can, uh, follow all the orders that are in place to keep you healthy and safe. With that, I'd like to go ahead and um, adjourn the meeting to the next regular meeting, which will be held on October 19, 2020 via Zoom webinar due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Closed session items will be discussed at 5.30 p.m. and the open session will commence at 7 p.m. Everyone be safe and have a good evening and good night. Good night.